Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, let's talk about Joker. Fale Adu. I don't know if that's how you fucking pronounce the name. Obviously, I'm not a fan. Um, well, it was directed by Todd Phillips. Written by Scott Silver and Todd Phillips. Based on DC characters. Anyway. Joker 2. However they're gonna pronounce it is not a film for me and what's interesting is i wasn't a fan of the first joker but i i tried to acknowledge its merits and why people liked it and why a 55 to 60 million dollar movie made nearly a billion dollars or more i got it and having talks with my friend about it how adamant he was that he didn't like it borderline hated it and I get it, you know, you don't want to, you're interested in a Joker, DC, this is a special take. So, the first Joker gets a pass from me, and then on a rewatch, I can appreciate it more, uh, the character study. Um, but a lot of the praising I did for cinematography or certain shots seemed to be borrowed, which is fine with me, and the acting... I think that's all I can give this movie. You know, so Joker, Folly, Ledoux, whatever the fuck, is disjointed to me. And even though, however much of a musical it is or not, it just doesn't work on me almost at all. But what can I say that's uh, Joaquin Phoenix, uh, Lady Gaga, Good, excellent performances. I mean, some of the shots were nice. I do not understand how this movie had such a high budget, but I guess to get everybody back, they paid like $20 million to Joaquin Phoenix and gave Lady Gaga a lot of money. I would say that I would have thought they utilized Lady Gaga more, but again, that's about the praise... I could think of um, an interesting shot here or there. Again, good acting, except for some of the ancillary characters. The it, it was just fucking ridiculous. But when I look at the second movie and I think of oh the director and he didn't want to do a first one, got to get him back and. He's making a point, and it's his story to tell, but in this day and age with internet and the way things become viral, it's not going to work out well for him, I don't think, in the end. I don't think enough people will look at this and say, you know, he made a statement, and I'm fine with it. Uh, you know, it doesn't sit well with me, but since I'm not a fan of the first one, Sort of try to give it its credit, you know, here and there. Not a rewatchable movie at all. This one will never get watched again, obviously, unless it's like a deep dive I want to do. But I don't like the pacing of this, the story, where it goes. If this director was in some way trying to make a statement about why people like the first Jokers and their subvert expectations and do all that fucking crazy 2020-something thing. It's not working for me at all. I would have liked to have seen Lady Gaga more in it and fleshed out a bit better. I would have liked the musicals to have a... I don't know. To me, I don't. I'm I don't like musicals. I, I never fucking did. But if you're gonna have music in it, I would think that the progression of the the lyrics of the of the of the song and the pacing, the tempo would impact the movie or Broadway fucking show or whatever. This doesn't seem to do that, which is fine. If this is a spoiler, you know, um, this is how Arthur Fleck. The Joker deals with reality, and that's fine. It doesn't have to be a blown out musical, but it gets a tad bit repetitive, sort of. And then the music, eh. again, gonna give praise to the performances. It's the best I can do. A couple of camera angles, the way he was shot, maybe. 
But as you're progressing through this fucking movie, it's just pointless. You can see where he wants to go with this. Uh, and it's really, <laughs> it really doesn't work for me on almost any level. It starts off with like an animation that is kind of like saying, oh, this is what happened in the first movie. And it just doesn't start to feel right. Like you're starting it off. But I could see if the animation went right into Joker in chaos and um, the highs of that last the last movie, the first movie, even though you're changing the context of it, to see that ride out more into a court scene. Rather than, after the animation, it's just him looking, you know, malnourished and sad in a, in a fucking hospital-type prison. It's just, okay. And that's one thing, right? So you could you might be interested it might be interesting to you to see it as it develops but when when i put all the pieces together and i start progressing to the you know middle of the movie or even the first scene with him and holly uh lee it becomes evident what they're gonna try to do not that it's something that me people need to fucking get a cipher and figure out it's like a major puzzle but this is a dour fucking movie and if it's trying to highlight mental illness in a certain way fine but you got to choose a lane in my opinion you got a story that people are interested from the first movie which they loved obviously like i said billion dollars and even i see the merit of some of it and you're not going to give them what they want it's even said in the fucking movie fine but then you got to deliver on Whatever lane you're in, you gotta deliver big time. So the the A plot type thing sucked. The B plot, you don't really know what the fuck is going on. They try to do a fucking court room scene drama intercut with this fucking jail cell and I don't know what to call them bright spots with Lady Gaga and some of the musical things. Caught my eye was a little interesting. I don't even like Lady Gaga's fucking music, but I'm not going to sit here and say she's not immensely talented. So you used the fuck out of her, but it didn't seem like they did. And maybe that's part of the director's vision. I don't know. I don't agree with so many aspects of this movie. And especially when you got maybe the best part of the movie where he's he fires his um, legal team. And is going to represent himself. I don't know why the fuck he starts talking like a southerner or whatever. But when he starts calling up, when he has to, um, I was going to say interrogate. When he has to question the, the people on the oath, one of them is one of the guys he was nice to. He let live in the first movie. So there's, there's some things there, but it's not enough. It's not bookended by... You know, if you're going to go out on a, the note that it did, you would have wanted a bigger crest of the, the, you know, roller coaster to go higher. But it just starts off in the pits and just lets you stay there and see the, you know, the, ooh, the humanity and how we treat people. But whatever. Again, I'm in the second fucking act, not giving a fuck, wondering... In my head, the deconstruction, they're just going to fucking, you know, tear them down and put them in a different place. But in prepping for this type of podcast and looking on, you know, IMDBD and Wiki, whatever, you, you find, I found something really interesting because. So we get into the beginning of the movie, he's down, he meets Hall, he gets a little bit of pep, uh, you know, it's, I don't think it's no spoiler secret that. She's interested in only the Joker, brings it out in him, and um, the court scene, middle of the movie, fucking musicals and certain numbers. He's starting to realize he's not the Joker, or oh no, he is the Joker. They wanted to do like a plea bargain thing, like oh, split personality. And I didn't even like the way they set all that up. They got Harvey fucking Denton in. That's part of what I'm going to get to 
because it was a little annoying. Um, so you got this fucking, what I thought was a pretty bad um, edit decision, the pacing, the way they put everything, to have this huge court scene, uh, a good moment here and there. But ultimately, the Joker's going to decide it was he who killed him. There is no Joker. Holly leaves him, that type thing. And you're getting towards the end of the movie. And you can just see <laughs> they have to update the because I didn't even like some of the, you know, the supporting cast and the, and the, and the way they were utilized. Because when you see where it was going, yeah, it has to be dark in this, and we're going to get one of the inmates kind of lights, and let's get to the end of the movie where we fucking, spoiler, you know, abuse him, maybe sexually, you know, they don't get too graphic, and then the fucking security guard chokes to death, this fucking, I don't know what his fucking name was, the guy who liked him, uh, Ricky, whatever, he was singing for him. Now, what I find interesting is, spoilers, you know, I don't really care, this movie, like, it's a little bit of insulting to most people, I think, and that's why it's getting really fucking negative uh, crit critique and reviews. So, they settle in on, Arthur Fleck admits it's just him, there's no Joker, he's responsible, he lets everybody down, <laughs> And an inmate who you see once or twice in the, in the throughout the movie tells him a joke and stabs him and kills him and gives himself the, what, the glass cow smile or whatever. You see him in the background giving himself the Heath Ledger um, scars. So, off the flag, dead and carrying on the last fucking number. I thought it was so fucking stupid. He must have leave something behind the sun and the guy takes it up but what i find fucking interesting and annoying is in the first movie uh, uh todd phillips wanted it to almost end i think with joaquin phoenix joaquin phoenix his arthur fleck joker giving himself the glasgow smile like giving him the scars across the mouth the lips and Nolan, who was still in business with them, said no. So it's got to be his mandate, Todd Phillips, to leave that impression because you already started it with Joker and Batman's parents' death and whether it was what people made up or whatever it was this impression that the Joker's antics or whatever created the Batman created Joker and then you know the ramifications for that which could which could be interesting in that sense but the director who didn't want to do a sequel wanted to connect his movie to Nolan's Heath Ledger Joker he doesn't Instead, he destroys what people liked about the first movie, in my opinion. And then, as a passing, sets up what would be the Joker in the Nolan universe or the DC fucking universe. Now, we know that there are new people in charge. Nolan is not in business with them no more. So, he couldn't have a say, I guess. But, again, it, to me, it's annoying. All that to what? To deconstruct your character from the first movie and you're upset as a visionary that they took the wrong meaning from it i don't know like of all the writing studies i've you know, all the study i've done there's a general sense of you know when you publish a novel you get your idea out it's not really yours in the sense where you don't get to tell people this is what i meant or well, maybe you can't, but you shouldn't, in the sense that when they read the book, it's their experience, it's their um, vision, what it means to them, and how it affects them, maybe. And the first movie was really good at that, if not something that I cared to watch at the time, and uh, what a friend would have really disliked it, but giving it again some merit, 
this seems like a purposely done type you know stick my nose up at everybody i don't know really why i'm not too familiar with todd phillips and i probably am you know because i watch all those uh i think he's more um comedy stuff or mustache and hodge um wow i, j I just find myself with these movies really wondering like what was the vision because part of the you know backstory here is when the new was it james gunn takes over dc that type thing todd phillips had no interference it was part of the thing he agreed to but james gunn did send him notes he didn't he didn't uh, i don't know he didn't consider their merit or whatever you know if they weren't good so this is todd phillips's vision this isn't one of those old studio interference and I don't know how it's going to be received later. I mean, you're going to make, you know, I guess, I don't know the industry. I don't know if you're ready to do a John Carpenter and just sit around and just do projects you love. Um, take the occasional, I wouldn't give this guy that much credit. John Carpenter is one of my favorite directors. But, you know, even uh, Lucas, who just made things here and there and came back with the prequels and, what lasting impression does this leave? Oh, I could do what the fuck I want, get insane amount of money for it. And that's part of the um even detractions to this movie. Some okay, so you see the steps and they show some things that are invoking the first movie, but I think it's only there to fucking show you how he's gonna break it down. Ah, follow you do Joker movie. This is one that you just don't um come away from. You know, I can't imagine. It's okay. Let's say um, Logan, right? Love the movie, but you know, I'm not really gonna watch it a couple times a month. It's got a tone and a finality to it that. I love that Deadpool and Wolverine just fucked it, but you know, there are themed type movies. You know, you're not gonna watch Exorcist, uh well it's October, so I'm watching all horror movies. And I can't see if someone even likes this one that it would be ever a rewatchable type thing even if it's questioned in the future like oh you told me about the joke of follow you do it was watched it I just, I just can't see it being looked back on as a righteous artistic expression if that's even fucking a thing i made it up um i did <laughs> i wasn't i wrote down like a joke i was gonna do but that I put more effort into my thumbnail than he put into the movie. But that's just being salty, I guess. Um, did it have too many... Did it have too many subjects it wanted to tell and thought it was being good at it? Did it care? Is I think what I mean, not that he didn't put effort into it. Was it a three-stage deconstruction of what he made so popular in the first movie that he personally didn't like it like i don't think that's something i would want to hold against creators in that way like, i even give that Zack snyder nutbag uh, a little leeway with they're gonna give him fucking 80 million dollars do his rebel moons give him another hundred whatever the fuck it is you know, I'm not gonna sit here and cry. And go all that money couldn't went to de dedicated movie. Ma I got, I don't know. I don't have the energy or the drive to really wonder about those things. But maybe something comes out of it. And yeah, I guess your track record sucks the fuck up. But I don't know what Todd Phillips' track record would be. Um, leading up to this, like. You get a bad feeling as soon as the 
movie's first cartoon ends and you're just watching him bony walking around and it's obviously just in your face you know brutal not really giving a fuck oh yeah so the guy does uh old school okay yeah the hangover oh those movies got fucking crazy less popular but you know to they did three fucking hangover movies. I left my ass off at the first, maybe one or two. Uh, you know, I don't know. Again, I'm not a Todd Phillips uh, aficionado. I'm not sure I will ever be, but I can remember having fun watching some of those more comedy things. You know, it's Tosh and Hutch, because that was a gripe with me. Because I was upset that they treated Tosh and Hutch as a spoof thing. But I liked it. I had fun with it. I love Starsky and Hutch. It's one of my favorite old school police shows. Yes, I'm born in 71, blah, blah, blah. So here we are with fucking Joker 2, Folie Du, and it's a mess to me. It's not really focused enough to get me captivated, even if you're going to do your own thing, if you're going to destroy the character you built, the concepts, uh, you know, like I said, people make it what it is for them. You know, you're not going to please everybody. And there's some great quotes out there. And I'm sure there's going to be some people really going into this like, what the fuck did you do? I'm anticipating watching some of this. Um, watching and listening to some of my people that I go to after I finish my podcast and figure out you know, where my biases are and is this something agreeable to in general like this is bullshit you know you can't do this to a character and jump from this to this are you gonna really you know are you gonna keep something like this going too for instance what do you you, you definitely walk away from this right <laughs> you, you don't um well i guess yeah it is the new god and by the way, I fucking hated that Batman movie. So they've done shit, in my opinion. I don't give a fuck how much praise that movie gets. Whisper me this, Batman. That fucking movie is funny. It's still my most viewed fucking thing. I put socks on it. It was just, I was fucking annoyed and frustrated. I love Batman. I want to see fucking cool Batman stuff. That movie sucked. So for me, it's not like even... You know, you could say, oh, this is going to be a bomb, but they've had, no, for me, no. Yeah, I don't think for the companies, Warner Brothers, like, you know, James Gunn's coming in, his fucking Superman better be fucking epic. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. But again, I, I do want to be, like, honest to myself, like, thinking about these things, like, I do my little meditation things, and, like, this is his vision. He was given the fucking money. He did what he want. Not what I fucking wanted. Not what I would want to rewatch. I don't even want to get much into the, you know, the story elements that are, were trying to be fucking put out there. Um, you know, take your fucking medicine and, and um, admit to your crimes. You don't have to make up a split personality type thing. If it's even real, you know how that is. Do a fucking internet search or something. <laughs> you know, what's a pseudo science and what is just theories on how the fucking brain works and my cognitive dysfunctions and blah, blah, blah. This movie would indicate to me that Todd Phillips has some fucking issues. But is it is right? I mean, I come in, I want to do this shit. It's a one shot for me. You want me to come back? Okay, well, now the budget's going to be <laughs> 200 fucking million. And I'm going to fucking do what I want. And what I want is not what you're going to care for. Hey, why do it, maybe? But is it a statement? You know, I could think of these things and admit, like, as a human, who I am. And if I'm a little selfish or, you know the things that make up make us who we are i mean i just can't imagine sitting in a bar getting to know todd phillips and him telling me what he's gonna do with the movie and not going are you fucking crazy i didn't even like that movie but it's a fucking billion dollar fucking 
cult classic. And it will live, that first Joker movie will live on. It will be a very interesting time, a beloved movie by many, there's no doubt. Like I said, I'm not one who enjoyed it that much at all, but there's merit there. And even if you're borrowing stuff and you're making it, you know, feel a little bit more gritty or more like a taxi driver and borrowing elements, I don't care. You know, you do it well. This movie, I don't know, somehow feels smaller, even though there's musical numbers and one musical number is like pretty cool. Uh, maybe two that I could think of, but it just uh, didn't work for me. So I don't find a lot to praise in this movie. Again, maybe I can give praise for Joaquin Phoenix, Lady Gaga. Um, that's really about it. Um, oh, the, 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 the lawyer, one of the lawyers, Harry Dank can go fuck himself. It was just stupid. Um, yeah, so they're good actors. They gave it their all, right? If, if that's what I'll say. And to find out that. Joaquin Phoenix had a dream. He felt he wasn't done with the character. They thought about doing a Broadway musical, which might have been the better way to go. But, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Uh, you know, good uh, good performances. They they did their best. A couple of cool shots here and there, but it's just. You know, a little too dreary and in your face, not enough subtlety in some of the concepts they were going for. I don't even know. Again, there's not much that in this movie made me, you know, get immersed and ride these thoughts into other areas where the movie was going. It was just so obvious. So in your face, this doesn't went out for me in the end um again uh, not much i can praise it i wish the music was even better i'm not even uh <laughs> but i was a little annoyed with guardians of the galaxy and all the fucking dancing music stuff a couple of songs were fucking awesome and i think the oh, it's the third movie that opens up with the uh, um fleetwood mac Anyway, I talk about Ragnarok and them using the Led Zeppelin. It was amazing. It was yeah, I thought Ragnarok. There's nothing in here that captivates me in that sense. Um, like an epic song they used. Why not do fucking Meatloaf, Paradise Planet Dashboard Lights? You see, now that would have fucking got me a little grooving. And you know, if you ever watched the fucking video, I, I recommend it. It's Meatloaf. Uh, <laughs> Paradise by the Dashboard Lights And he's got the woman on the stage with him with a, There's a band But it's fucking awesome and it tells a story You know That's what they should have done You see, you no, know, the director's cut Put in Paradise by the Dashboard Lights A fun, fucking crazy, sexy thing uh, You know, guessing about a jock and his girl That all the boys wish they were with her that night And you know, and then the cutting in of fucking the Yankee announcer, Phil Rizzuto. It's fucking epic. We watched the video. It's just, it's just hilarious and awesome. This didn't have that for me. It didn't even have a song that really fucking captivated my heart and, you know, threw me in. It's just, you know, good attempts with acting, going for it. Uh, again, I'll give Lady Gaga credit. Um, amazing talent not for me in that sense but you know i'm not downloading or looking for her fucking playlist with anything on with hers on it and there's some catchy stuff i'm, I'm not an idiot but well, i'm not that much of a fuck face but what are we gonna do you give a, a guy money to make a fucking movie he makes it his own way and like i said you do a little research into it uh it's clear he had all the fucking 
all the you know all the power to do anything he wanted and even when the regime changed and james gunn came in he just sent him a note like i think he even gave praise to the movie but just gave a couple of notes and todd phillips was like you know what no or whatever well maybe he did but just the statement seems like he's like i don't want nothing to do with dc uh i found that interesting that they cut out the dc logo type bullshit you know i don't know what politics are happening here but i'm supposed to go to a movie entertained uh even if it pulls on my heartstrings even if it is not what i expected i want to come away with the experience i fucking hate this concept of like oh people want to just hate stuff i mean yeah we all have biases and come in with preconceived built-in fucking responses basically but in the end i'm sure most people want to fucking enjoy the whole the whole thing the experience there's so many movies that aren't that good that i gush over because sometimes it's just the experience of who you're with how much you laugh what you did afterwards this movie's a fucking dud it's just it seems to not give a fuck on a level that is insulting it doesn't give enough of what you would want to see you know wanted to see gaga really fucking go at it belting these tunes and show her as the fucking you know the lying cunt whatever but it doesn't seem like there was enough for her to to really fucking shine in this movie but again i don't know fucking how long i fucking keep doing this but i i don't want to always hate on fucking movies and i'm gonna give joaquin phoenix and gaga credit maybe a couple of camera shots which i've said like fucking nine times because i really can't muster up much the one of the courtroom scenes one and i found it all to be bullshit like why are we doing this now why are we cutting hair what was the decision to abuse the joker and you know you could have just done the choke out the friend realizing the joker's brought nothing but misery admit to your things there is no joker and then to have a fucking stupid fucking inmate become the heath ledger joker and it being passed down i guess that's something i get it but like i said even if you take the major messages of the movie they seem muddled and mean-spirited but for, for no other reason like, and again i'm sure there are movies out there that really you know drive certain messages home but i don't think that this movie succeeds very well don't tell me that this fucking shouldn't have been a near billion dollar talked about movie uh, at the very least and i'm trying to be you know somewhat objective if, if you fucking can it looks like this is going to be what they would consider a flop a disaster type thing and credit wise and reputation wise does dc just let this go they had to whatever they have a contract get to put out a movie how can we not have do this we have a movie we spent 55 to 60 million on it grossed a billion and even that seems to be something they fucked up because if there's stories about them not even making a lot of money off it because of whatever the fuck how this shit works <laughs> i'm about to laugh my ass off like i'm here trying to explain this shit i don't know what the fuck i'm really talking about yeah, I consider myself maybe a writer and, and you know, help me. I'll punch up his script. As I will. Here's my novel I published. But no, I'm not a fucking, you know, desperate to pay my rent type guy. This is fucking, should be something that would irk me. Again, I try to be understanding. You know, we want to get the, you know, let's get all we can out of it and throw a lot of money into it. And again, if it's not, if it's not the pay raise for the actors and the director, there's no fucking way I would believe this cost as much as it did. There's nothing in this movie, you know, even if you consider a, a special set or two for a musical number, there's no fucking way. <laughs> it, it, 
it boggles my mind. I, I really can't envision this being anything like that. A little bigger than the first one? Sure, okay. But in a way, does it feel even smaller? And I mean that by like maybe concept or how you're editing it and how open the first movie felt. They did a shot in here where he runs through the streets or... But I don't know, either it's so seldom used that the city doesn't feel open and scary. It was a moment about the first one where, you know, you're in a fucking New York City or, and it's big and vast and can be scary and you've got mental issues. This one felt, I don't know, smaller in scale, yet triple the fucking money again. Yeah, you don't want to do it. You stop me from putting the fucking Glasgow smile on Arthur Fleck to make him the Joker that we all know. This is what you expected. No, this is what it really means now. And, you know, fuck it. And like I said, I, I want to give credit. You know, no one knows downer guys all the time. I mean, nothing's, you know, <laughs> what am I going to do? Black Adam was like fucking just barely okay and a, and a fun factor maybe, but you can see where the fucking some meddling happened or you hear that they split the movie should have been part of Shazam. Yeah, fucking no duh. And if you're going to make this and it's the end of the regime, you know you're not carrying it over. I guess you can carry over with some of the critical acclaim of the Penguin, which I haven't checked out yet. But the fucking desperate people who like the fucking Batman movie, yeah, I said it. I don't, I don't know what you hope to gain from this. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there would be. There's a part that wanted this to be grossing two billion, but. I don't think you give a fuck. Really, I don't. This is, to me, an artistic statement. Um, a play on what his movie meant. The, the, the meta. I'm doing the fucking quote fingers. The meta of it all. Let's put it in the movie. Let's show, you know, what these depraved fucks who like my movie like. <laughs> you know, is it really that? petty like you know you glorified my joker movie you made it make a billion dollars <laughs> so i'm just gonna fucking put this out and just like be cruel and fucking miserable for it so yeah maybe another <laughs> another like praise would be that spark with gaga that that the first, the first couple of interactions that made him come out against the Joker. And that's probably not what they wanted. <laughs> oh my God. What we have here to me is an artistic guy type movie, whatever slash. Didn't give a fuck in the long run. Made a statement, you know. <laughs> then he... I don't know, he went to a retreat. <laughs> if it's true, whatever. You know, you read these things before I do a podcast and I'm like, oh shit. Joker, follow you do, you know. Again, the first movie you give a pass to, appreciate it more, but not a rewatchable fan gushing over it. Understand its merits, hopefully. I borderline on saying that this movie sucks in a, in a, you know, <laughs> in a way that matters because, again, its purpose just seems to be cruel and way in your face. You can maybe do it a little more subtly and get a little bit more out of um, audience enjoyment, <laughs> like... I just can't see this movie fucking ever gaining any credit, you know, or respect or one of those things that's looked back on hindsight is other than maybe a fucking tantrum and it's it maybe insulting to say, like, you don't know the minds of these people. <laughs> oh, shit. 
you know, you learn about certain things like I had a fascination with psychology and all that shit, blah, 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 blah. It's funny because you, if you meet an actor, you know, what it takes to be an actor type thing, even a doctor or a surgeon, you know, what it takes to cut people open and, you know, there are brain type things like, <laughs> can you see this fucking guy? You know, and he, you know, coming into work with like fucking grease on him with a fucking bird feathers on him. You know, has to direct comfortably with like one foot in a fucking tub of water. Yeah, I don't know. It could just be a fucking took a chance. He fucking his heart was in it, and he wanted to make a good movie regardless and you had no interference and it was a good thing for the industry let this guy do what he wants i don't know but joker folie do i don't like it borderline sucks for what it's trying to do what it did and recontextualizing the first movie and you know that's what people made that what it was it's hard to grasp for me this is something i would not recommend uh, no, do I give a fuck about it? Like, like I said, there's a, there is a part that, you know, I take my breaths, I do my meditation and breathing. But this movie, whether that's its goal or not, is not impacting me the way it thinks it wants to. Well, most people, if you love the first movie and he's trying to make a statement about it and you're disappointing him and saying, hey, this is the stark truth, deal with it. Or someone like me who kind of just likes some aspects of the movie and... This is a shitty movie to me. Building it up from the animation to the beginning, to the middle, to, to the end. Or if you want to quit and Tarantino this, like whatever the fuck you want to do. In the end, this is just bullshit. And I don't like to be insulting like that. But uh, like I said, I, I spent a couple of minutes here and there during this podcast just trying to be, hey, you know. Give me the money. I'm making my vision. This is what I wanted to do. This is how I really feel about everything. Let me turn everything on its ear. Fine. But if you're not worried about the repercussions, you know, I don't know how your next projects will go. Um, is this a bitterness or is this just like a thing you got off your chest and you let it go? I guess we can see in the next uh, things he might do, how it's received. Well, I guess those are my thoughts. Um, not something I recommend, not rewatchable. It's something that people will probably want to forget if they fucking really like the first movie. You know, they just cut the fucking movie out of their, what is it, head cannon? <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, fuck this movie, you know. It doesn't work. You know, let's show the animation of a shadow taking over Arthur Flack and... He was responsible for killing the fucking comedian on the talk show house. It's just fucking Robert De Niro or whatever. And I'm just going to ramble again. I wish I could be more excited about a movie, especially a movie like this that was, in my opinion, should have been made for me to love it and appreciate the first one because I'm not a big fan of the first one. But this just does nothing. It's the opposite. It's telling me that the first one wasn't worth my time. And most of the superficial things that I gave some credit for were just what they were. Here, possibly the same thing. Give a little credit to the actor. Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga, fine. Give you a slow hand clap. You know, you, you pulled it off. You put your effort in. But ultimately, not a movie for me. Borderline sucks, in my opinion, if you're just looking at it from structure this you know how we're gonna tell a story i don't give a fuck how it you know connects to the first one in even that sense so those are my thoughts joker folly you do oh all right we got that over with let's go dc your superman you know he's got to save the day all right everybody hope you're all doing well Let's get ready for winter. Winter is coming. Take care, everybody.